This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. We are back with Dan Yi on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward. Thanks for joining us again, Dan. Okay. We are today going to be asking the question, what is business ownership like now in 2022 compared to pre-pandemic? What, what are the differences that you've noticed? I definitely became more of a business person than a coffee person. What does, what does that mean? Of, I know what that means yeah, because and, I did the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. So I guess like beforehand we were in a, I mean, we'd been going for like five odd years mm. and it was, and we'd just been doing our thing. We woke up, we made coffee. Um, you know, we went home. It was like an easy system. We'd roast on this day. We would, you know, taste what we roasted on this day. We would, you know, cup and then we would, it was just an easy routine. And mm -hmm. it was probably that last, like, you know, people who are close to me would probably acknowledge this too, but I would probably say that in the last maybe 10, six to 10 months before COVID happened, um, mm -hmm. I was probably in the best headspace as far as work was concerned. It was just an easy routine. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have to think about it. It was clockwork. Yeah. Um, I was just enjoying what we did. Um, and then, um, you know, in that time, got married and, um, yeah, which is change in life and stuff. But it was like everything was nice in a nice routine. And then um, we took a – COVID started rearing its head. I think we'd started hearing about it like around Christmas the mm -hmm. year prior and then we saw it popping up more in January February I don't know if it was totally here yet but maybe um, we didn't know and then um, we had actually organized a trip to Japan um, leaving March 1st Ouch. and we were, and it was like uh, like just and my wife and I Tracy and we were like uh, should we go on this uh, is this smart um, we didn't know uh, I think if it wasn't Japan, I think if it was North America or Europe, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have gone. Uh -huh. um, but we we're like, uh, Japan knows how to do this. They know yeah, how to yeah, do yeah. pandemics. Um, they and we, uh, I think we we go there every year. We try to go there every year um, because it's such a it's just the best place. Mm -hmm. um, it has, uh, I mean, it has everything for one. Super traditional. To super modern and everything in between <laughs> and every little subculture and there's, you can find your crew anywhere yeah right. um no matter how weird it is uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and and we love it for that um we love art we love you know um clothing and we love design good design and they have all that um but most of all we love the people there and the culture mm -hmm. that they have of it's a very respect respectful of each other culture um it's a very considerate culture it's a very mm -hmm. Um, we're all in this together culture. And so when the pandemic hit there, we're like, ah, oh, they know how to do this. Um, they don't have to be, you know, uh, threatened with fines um, to, to wear Comply. a mask. They don't, you know, just like, just do the small things. It's a little sacrifice for the greater good. They're mm -hmm. cool with that. Um, so we went. We went um, and we had a great time. Um, we went to Osaka and things were quieter than they normally were, which is great because we got into all the restaurants and drank all the French <laughs> wine that we didn't think we were going to. And it was great. Um, and caught up with a few friends. And uh, But as soon as we got back to the airport um, uh, to catch the plane um, with mostly Australians coming back, and it was probably only 10% of the flight was coming mm -hmm. back, um, uh, straight away, I was like, you, you just remembered that maybe maybe we don't do it as well as they do. Mm. <laughs> that's, it's, that's my nice way of putting, I just thought it was like just coughing everywhere, feet up on like, oh, I've got heat through now, I'm just going to put my feet up everywhere. And pull. Anyway, pretty grubby. Um, but we got back and then things started like, 
um, the reality, I think, of COVID and the impact of it was hitting here pretty hard. And we're, we didn't, we were going to do a, um, we didn't have to do mandatory quarantine yet. They hadn't instilled that. Um, we chose to do it anyway for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, loosely in that um, we got back and I think four days later they we didn't know what was going on we thought they were just going to shut everything down no mm-hmm. takeaway coffee like no coffee sitting in definitely no takeaway coffee we thought we the only thing that we could do to make money would be to send roasted bags of coffee to people and equipment okay. and whatnot. that's what we thought it was right. sort of like worst case scenario and so um I we spent a few days at home and then at night time at like 10 o'clock at night I, I couldn't just sit at home knowing my business was potentially just going to die yeah um and my staff were going to be jobless and me like we're not going to be able to pay I couldn't just sit at home and do nothing so I'd literally go in there at 10 o'clock at night midnight and just wipe clean everything fix stuff I just had to do anything something um uh and then um then they started locking it down with restrict putting restrictions on places and the night before that I think it was a Sunday night I put together the worst online store um so we used square as our post system and there was mm-hmm. a button on on our report sheet saying um build your own website now I literally pressed it and then <laughs> I think they used Square, used Weebly or something and it opened up a thing and I literally just started dragging stuff into the You're template. Like, put this and, here and put this here and yeah, put this here. Put the price and built a website overnight. I've never done it before and uh-huh. it's like if you go to it, please don't. It shows. <laughs> um, so no links in the that, show notes? <laughs> it's just, there's no need to. It's very uh, straightforward. Bare bones. It just—it's basically just something where you can buy coffee from us if you want. There's no—I haven't mm-hmm. put any. Basically, I just found stock photos that we had around, dragged them in. Yeah. Um, the bag descriptions are just what we taste. Uh, mm-hmm. The it's, it's nothing like if my job was to build websites. It's nothing right. like, and if I right. had time to sit around and build a proper website, and or enlist someone to do it for us, it's so far from that. It's okay. very just, it works. And how long ago was that? And uh, I haven't changed anything. And it still works. <laughs> and that's what it needs to Which do, you, right? There are other bigger work. problems that need solving yeah. than yeah. making the website look sexy. Yeah. And that probably, you know, to be honest, goes along with our Instagram page. We probably, I, by we, I probably drop a photo on it. Once a month? Once a month. <laughs> At best, and usually it's because like restrictions have come into play, and I need to change our hours. And let right, um, right. Like so, I think uh, the descriptions, are, even the descriptions on our our, our coffee, uh, um, we have a thing. Like, one of my genius marketing ideas. Okay. So there was basically because I couldn't be bothered putting all the coffees that we have up because we go through about fifty different coffees a year plus. Mm-hmm. Um, for a small roastery, I, I'm That's super a lot. proud of that. It's, yeah, it's a lot, and um, we just like buying less coffee more often. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so I just put Shoji's choice, and I think that the description is like let Sho- Shoji choose for you because we haven't got time to upload all the coffees that we have, so we'll just send you what we're liking right now. It's something like that. Perfect, and that's probably the most bought thing on our web, yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, the whole thing's a bit of a joke. That was so. That's what we did. I did that the night before. It was a Sunday night, and we got that going for the Monday. Uh, but then they said you can do takeaway coffee still. So that right. was more transition then. Um, so at night time, I went in and I sort of turned the shop into some sort of takeaway friendly setup and tried to like rejig all our systems and um, just hustle. It was a big hustle. The whole thing's been like the last few years have been a hustle. It's it's constant um, reaction. To everything right yeah totally and not only reaction to everything but trying to be ahead of um what might happen like just basically we could it, this could happen this could happen this could happen this could happen so i had contingencies for all those um, mm-hmm. 
it was probably definitely probably it was easily the most stressed I've been ever 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 mm -hmm. even and business actually went really well through the COVID period is going really well through COVID actually the best years we've ever had right um uh but it's also been the most stressful because we just had to hustle um do you do you feel that you've got an understanding now of the way business should be going during this pandemic because we're clearly not over? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I have a better. Uh, I don't know if the understanding is there. I think I've always had a little. My my dad's a great business person. Mm -hmm. He started his own company from nothing. Um, he's got a company that sells chemical pumps, mm -hmm. um, literally pumping corrosive materials around from one place to the other wow. um, whether that be you know something small like for a little fish pond to a mine um oh, you know, wow. the size of trucks um so uh and he built that from nothing in um you know importing uh chemical pumps from japan um we used to there was no storeroom so we would sleep with them under our bed um you know, and now he's got this cool little business that he's had for how old am I? Almost like forty-two years, almost. Mm -hmm. Like he literally, I think he was twenty-three. He uh, got married, had me seven months later. Um, <laughs> got a mortgage where interest rates are seventeen and a half percent. You know, and started this business days. all in one year, all in yep. one year, and I'm like. I had no idea at 23 what I was going to do. And I remember mum was 21. She just cried all the time. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, he was literally siphoning. I still can picture him ramming a, a, a hose down um, his company car before then, um, sucking out the petrol, mm. putting it into a, a, a tank so he could pour it into mum's car. Because that's how poor we were. <laughs> it was like yeah. this is the situation, you know. And so, and he's built it up, and he's you know done really well with it. Um, but he's got a good business head on him, and mm -hmm. I think maybe like I learned a lot of stuff from him, um, not intentionally. I never thought I actually would have my own cafe. Um, I think I even said maybe a year before Salvage, I never want to own my own cafe. I still say work. I never want to own my own cafe. <laughs> I help is, people it's way build too much them. Work. I hope yeah. people build them, and I do all over the world. But uh, yeah. it, I'm I'm not someone who should own a cafe. It's just not for yeah. me. And and it's it's different world now than when we we were baristas. It's yeah. a completely it, it, different. It's world. really it's really hard now. I find not to just succumb to um, whatever's trending, whatever's hypey. Yep. Um, whatever customers want necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's really hard not to, to just sell out to that because the margins on um, our product are so small at our other business owner end because our rents are super high and stuff. So there's always little sacrifices being made in there and it's really hard not to just give over to those. Yeah. And 100%, I totally get it that you have to sometimes, often. Mm. um to survive you know because i mean in the end you need you can't it's not a hobby for a lot of people it's you know putting food on the table and paying the, yeah. the rent and surviving um which i totally get but it's really hard not to just be a slave to all the stuff that people want all the time especially um, in this industry yeah and if you're really passionate about something and care um you know uncompromisingly want to maintain that it's super hard <laughs> like it, it just really is and so walking that line between i'm going to go with um i don't know if it's the opposite end but i'm just going to call it integrity mm -hmm. and selling out to make a business work um we prefer to walk this line if possible yeah um He's pointing to integrity for anyone that's listening. Integrity. This is the integrity side, not the full right, selling no, out. Right, but the people who are listening can't yeah. see it. Because <laughs> it's podcast. super easy just to sell out. It's oh, really it's easy. so like, much easier. So easy. It's so much easier. Um, salvage was in a big way, like I was saying, 
previously um, we built that cafe because we wouldn't do what we do but we had to um, we built a, a fit out that was uh, enticing to people because they felt cool we made them mm-hmm. feel cool because they came yep. to our place yep. even though we're not cool <laughs> we we pretended <laughs> that we were and they got on board with that and they wanted to be cool too because that's we know how people work and yep. at that time anyway in that space um and so um it's really hard to walk that integrity line a lot. Um, so a lot of it's just hustling as well. Um, were you surprised by how having, razor thin the margins were? Yeah, especially with um, one thing that we – actually one thing when we started our Tifisa that we probably underestimated in a good way was how um, not having food um, chefs, a kitchen, equipment in a kitchen, extra weight stuff to move that product from the kitchen. Um, uh, we underestimated how the burden much we the, didn't the, want that. It yeah. was such a burden. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Um, sure, your turnover is going to be a lot more if you have food, etc. But your uh, your margins and your profit profit is not necessarily going to be that right. much more. That's what we salvage should... was. Salvage was a lot of work. I want to really explore that with you because there's a big, and we'll do that in the next episode because there's a massive yeah. misconception about how fro- how profitable cafes are and whether you should have just a coffee like a cafe that runs with just coffee, which is what typically happens in countries like the US and in Europe and and other places versus here in Australia where our cafes and, I mean, it's a fine line between the difference between a cafe and a restaurant here, you know, so. They're pretty much the same thing. They really, really are. So let's talk about that in the next episode. Uh, I think that's a really important thing to explore because we've really seen the gambit of how, the specialty coffee industry started here in Australia and we've pretty much been involved with it since the beginning, both of us. So it, I think that'll be a really interesting thing to explore. Let's do that in the next episode. For sure. Awesome. Peace, love and peanut butter, everyone. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.